Well, good morning and welcome to the Church Office podcast. If you're listening in or you're watching on video, then thank you so much for joining us. It's 2023 and uh, I've got a special guest, John Truscott, with us this morning. John, thank you for joining us, mate. Gavin, great to be with you again. Good to be here. And before we jump into our topic, which is kind of healthy churches and, you know, as we start the new year thinking about review, I just want to do a quick shout out to Axe Hawkins and Karen Coleman. Just thank you so much for listening into the podcast. Thank you for taking the time to write to us over the Christmas break and encourage us here at the church office. So really, really grateful for you and for all of our listeners who are, um, you know, giving great feedback, questions and ideas. So, yeah, we appreciate the community that's building around this and uh, look forward to to serving you today on this topic. Um, John, nice Christmas break for you. Good to be back um, at your desk. Well, I tweeted earlier this week as a sort of encouragement to everybody on a dark January morning that probably other people are feeling as you do. And that yeah. had a lot, of, uh, a lot of feedback. So I think probably most people find this week particularly difficult. Yeah, first week back is hard, isn't it? Yeah, trying to get all the plates spinning again and get everyone in the right places, everyone get the right things they need. So it is um, it is a bit of a challenge. Um, so today, John, we're talking about healthy churches. I, I guess lots of teams and individuals or staff members will be quite reflective in this first few months of the year, um, thinking about what we need to prioritise. I know we're going away next week as a team, as a kind of on a sort of staff retreat or staff day. So all of those things are happening, aren't they? And I just thought this would be a really interesting topic to kind of pick your brains. Because you, you've got huge experience of working with churches. You've got this fantastic tool. Um, your website is full of resources that are just so useful and helpful. Um, tell us, well, tell well, us your thoughts. I'm doing health, Gavin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some years ago, I go back a long way. Um, and some years ago, the, the, the big buzzword was church growth. Yeah, yeah. And yet we all want to see growth in every form, not just in numerical growth. Yeah. Um, but behind growth must be health. Yeah. I think it's a much better topic to be tackling. Yeah. Um, a healthy church can be used by God in whatever way he wishes. Yeah. Um, if we just play the, just look for the numbers game, then I think we've gone off on a, on a wrong tangent. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, that's very wise. That's a great place to start. And so, John, tell us a bit about this tool that you've, you've developed on on your website the, the church health review um i've read through it and gone through it this year um t- tell us some of the background on this and your thinking on this uh well it goes back to my days in the organization ad ministry mm-hmm. some people will remember and some people won't um but trying to think i mean i'm an analyst at heart okay i like analyzing things in church life And so what I tried to do there for something I was writing, what we called a resource paper or a how-to guide, um, was how how can you analyse what church life should to be, should cover? Mm -hmm. Um, And I came up then with the basic idea of five dimensions, five areas that we we could explore. And that's gone over into the Church Health Review. Mm. And the five are um, not activities people sometimes start off well what's worship although they don't define what worship is uh, there's yeah. fellowship they don't define what fellowship is and so on and so forth i felt no it's not activity we want to do it's relationship yeah and so i i developed the idea of and it's very similar to many other people's thinking on this the idea of a godward relationship an usward relationship mm-hmm. in a church and an outward relationship yeah but then I added two others to it. One was leadership, yeah, and one was organisation or support, support behind the scenes to enable all this to happen. Yeah. So that gave me five different areas of church life. So that's where it all started from. Yeah, it's great, and I love those five categories that you've put together in there. I think the, the yeah the upward, the inward, the outward. Um, well, you don't say inward, do you? Because you, you us would. Well, there, there are, <laughs> I coined this phrase us would um, because inward sort of gave the wrong impression. To yeah, me. it does. Yeah. I mean, there's up in and out. You know, different people use different ideas here. But what I'm trying to say is it's what we want to talk about is relationship. Yeah. Whatever words you use, not activity. Yeah. Yeah. And once you start talking about worship as one of them, then you, you've got to define worship. And to me, worship isn't just what we do on a Sunday. It's what we do Monday to Saturday. 
yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Um, and and so a relationship with with the Trinity, with God Himself, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. seems to be a better way of of tackling that. And hence the relationship with God, relationship with each other. Yes. Brits are very bad at. Yeah. Um, and perhaps the Welsh are so much better at it. I don't know, don't know about that, John. <laughs> <laughs> And our relationship with the world outside. If we build yeah. a, a castle, put a moat around it and put a portcullis yeah. uh, to stop the world infiltrating the church, yeah. then we have lost what Christ told us to do in, in, in his final commandments. Yeah, absolutely right. And I, I think on this podcast, we, we, we're not, we're not going to um, give you the summary to follow to get a healthy church. We're, we're not going to give you... Um, you know, all the tools that you need, because, you know, we, we know we must recognize at the start that Christ is the one who's building his church, isn't he? He's the great shepherd and and we are, you know, tools in it and his grace is at work. And and sometimes church is messy, John, isn't it? And it's it's not a straightforward. And you say sometimes, Gavin. <laughs> well, maybe all the time, John. <laughs> yeah, it is messy. And and because we're talking about relationships here, relationships are are messy, aren't they? And um, and they take work. And so there, there's always. Um, I always get worried when I talk to people about doing a church review because they often go, "I'm at the end of this, I'm going to feel so overwhelmed with having to do something." And what are those things? And um, but actually, there's there's grace at work, and and we can talk about how we apply some of this later. But um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a starting point that goes. Actually, we need God to help us, and we need Him to build this church and make the signposts big, give us the wisdom that we need, give us the the right people in the right places to to make all those things happen. So um, a little bit of a disclaimer there, John, maybe at the start of this. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. And in the Church Health Review, which is the tool you're talking about on my website, um, seeks to say that those five areas, those five relationships, including the leadership and the support, I think pretty well encapsulate everything that a church ought to be and ought, ought to be concerned with. Yeah. But it's not activity, it's relationship and then the leadership and support to enable those relationships to be healthy. Yeah. And and it they, those categories are great. And John, you're you you give this kind of lovely picture of context of when you're doing it, you know, you've not only developed this model, you know, with people that can go through the through the process and use the tool, but you've you've given a bit of context of books that are out there at the time that have been present. Take us through some of that, because you, you've checked it across lots of different things, isn't okay. it? It isn't just a questionnaire. It, it, yeah, it, it's a different, the model I've developed is a different starting point. Instead mm. of saying, here are three, six, ten marks of a healthy church, which is what the books tend to do. Yeah. And that's good, that's a good approach. Yeah. I start at a different point and say, let's think what a church should be doing or should be being. Yeah and then test everything in that. So Mm. it's more complicated because I'm testing a vast area of church life Mm. rather than certain marks of mission, as it were. Yeah. The the books I was, I suppose I was basing it on, um, well, some of them are well-known and some are not. The one that's not well-known is a workbook by somebody called John Cole. Mm -hmm. This goes back a few years now to the 1990s. Yeah. Um, when he wrote a book called How to Be a Local Church. Yeah. A for workbook, I've got it here. Um, it's gold mine because he was working in a rural Anglican diocese and trying to help churches move forward in their concept of what a church should be. Yeah. And some of the basic thinking comes from him. Much better known is Robert Warren's work yeah. and the Healthy Churches Handbook. Mm-hmm. Uh, I test what my model comes with against that yeah people will have known will have heard of um uh rick warren in the states no relation Uh, robert warren and rick warren no relation um and his purpose-driven church that that got a lot of publicity when it first came out but he was basing that on purpose yeah and to me the one that is still just as relevant though it's gone out of the headlines Mm. um, is um natural church development by Christian Schwartz. Yeah. And that's a European book based on research about churches that are growing and churches that are not and what marks out a healthy church. Mm-hmm. And to me, although that's gone out of the, the sort of mainstream thinking now because it's getting on a bit in a few years, to me, that is gold dust again. Yes. 
of of marks of a healthy church of, of a spirituality and everything else and, and the research discovered that you know some of the marks at the time when there was thinking about a lot of thinking about church growth mm -hmm. were actually not what was appropriate for church health yeah. yeah and there was too much emphasis on the on the numbers game and not enough on what christ has called his church to be yeah so what i've written is based on is on the shoulders of great people who've written great stuff yeah. um and although i have a different approach i've tested it against and it fits with with those sort of four or five sources yeah yeah, it's great. And I think under each of those five themes that you've developed, you've created a set of questions of you that people can can go through. Take us through what does that look like, John? Well, it gets quite complicated. And if there's a criticism <laughs> I'd have myself of this, it can get complicated. Um, what I do is take those five dimensions of Godward, Usward, Outward, leadership and support. And then I ask nine questions about each of those so there's 45 questions nine times five mm -hmm. uh, and the questions have several sort of they're quite lengthy questions in that they go on for several phrases yeah. because they've got to cover a wide variety of churches yeah um and they're based they're, they're all grouped together in particular ways so just to give you an example the mm -hmm. first question on the godwood theme and their open questions um, is to what extent are the services prepared and led in such a creative way that everyone is drawn into meaningful involvement rather than spectating with appropriate variety in forms of liturgy and days times length that appeal to a range of tastes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's quite a, quite a mouthful, <laughs> but what I'm hoping is any church will just pick from that what's relevant for them. Yeah. And so there is these nine questions on each of the five areas. Mm. And then for each of those questions, I have what I call a number of sample tests to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Mm. What matters is the question, not the sample tests, because one sample test won't apply to your church or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, for example, the first sample test on that one is people acknowledging a series of of excellence about each service, a sense of excellence about each service with a blend of confession, prayer and intercession, praise, silence, news, Bible teaching, sacrament, ministry, etc. I'm just trying to give some ideas of what a healthy answering of this question might look like. Yeah. So that people can't say, oh, we're good at that and sort of put a tick against it. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, I, I, I found going through the questions really useful. And I think there were some of them where I was thinking, right, how would I answer this? What do I need to look at? You can then go into the sample tests that you've got and go, ah, OK, I see where this is going. I see where I need to kind of, you know, think more about this area. Um, and I, I found it really, really helpful, John, to have that sample testing there. I know people might jump straight to it, but it actually just reaffirms and strengthens the question for me to bring real clarity to go. OK, yeah. but in, in the print, I keep saying there's a box that keeps saying it's yeah. not, this, this model is not based on the sample tests. They're, they're not what it's about. It's the questions. Yeah, it's They're question. only sample mm. tests to see how it might work out for a church. Yeah. And that, that's that's excellent. And John, let's let's go into some of the themes that because we're we're a church administration podcast we're, we're we're reaching people who i guess would not necessarily be sat in the room when you're you know if, if you're reviewing the godwood one or something like that you yeah. know we, we may not get invited into those kind of conversations but but yet yeah, we are very represented in in the areas of the the outward i think and obviously the support and the leadership support is the one that would most apply really and, and each of these i apply i link to a, a part of the body hmm. And for the support one, I have great fun because I link that to our gut and yeah. our intestines. <laughs> and um, I hope administrators will, will share the joke with me. Yeah. That actually what, and, and I'm an administrator myself, yeah. um, a passionate administrator. And what we're doing is the unseen internal organs of the body of Christ yeah. to enable it to function well and be healthy. Yeah. 
uh, I, I, I start with worship being the heart, I'd go through the mind and all sort of thing. But when it comes to administration and our supporters, it's the gut. Here we are, the gut. <laughs> so we're the intestines yeah. of the church. We're the liver of the church. We're the stomach of the church. Yeah, the hidden um, work that goes um, on. Yeah. I rather enjoy it being that myself. But I mean, I have a warped sense of humour, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> and what, what were some of the other body parts and the other ones, John? I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, now. Okay. Well, I said the heart is, uh, is worship. Yeah. Is the is the Godwood side? Yeah. Um, the bloodstream is okay. the Uswood side because that's what's linking everything up together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I do a blood pressure check for that one. The eye is the outward theme. Yeah. Um, is what we see, it's what we're yeah. seeing outside. Leadership is the brain, and support is the intestines, the gut. But since Jesus himself talked about the, well, well Paul himself talked yeah. about the body as, as a picture of, of, of yeah. the church, it just seems to me that we can take body parts. Yeah. I, I, if you're I, squeamish, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. All people who are, who are now feeling they shouldn't have had any breakfast, I'm very sorry. But to me, administration is all about intestines. Yeah. Yeah. And so, John, what, what advice would you give then to administrators who kind of starting the year? undertaking a review um in different sections because yeah I, i'd be interested in what your thoughts are on that well if it's just specifically the administrators the, the point about this model is it's quite complicated yeah yeah and so you can actually simplify it by just taking one of those five themes and do another theme next year or something like that it, it doesn't mean the whole thing has to be done in one big exercise absolutely right yeah so you could take the support theme and say, let's let's do a test on that this year. Mm. Next year, we could do a different one. And so the support theme is based into four questions on um, administration and four questions on resources yeah. and one question on how that's developed. Each of these five areas has a question on development. Yeah. So on administration, it's about the office, it's about the structures, it's about the coordination. Right. And it's about good practice. Yeah. Uh, on resources, it's about uh, staffing. It's about plant, plant. It's about finance, and it's about resources in general. Yeah. Um, so, for an administrator wanting to do a review, it, rather than a church wanting to do a review, mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. function would be a great one to start with. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good to remind us, isn't it? As we talk about it, is it, it is a whole church review isn't it it's, it isn't just the, the one area that we're involved in it, it, it it's it's like teams sitting down together or, or elders sitting down to, together with deacons it, you know it's, it's pcc sitting down and saying right let's review this i think the support one john is interesting because we've we've had a couple of years haven't we in covid where everything's changed in terms of our ministry structures in terms of our our outputs our capacity of some things may have changed in those areas and then we've got this cost of living crisis and and people churches are affected by their giving and i know some places are already saying if we don't see a change by the first quarter we're going to end up having redundancies and so um so that there seems like we almost need multiple plans in this as well of review um there, there's some tough times in there, isn't there, in trying to assess them? There are, yes. Um, I mean, one of the tests is finance, because that comes in the resources section. Mm. Um, how true is it that our finances are seen as key areas of spiritual ministry, which serve rather than dictate vision? And are they overseen with wisdom and thoroughness? That's the question. Yeah. So is money there um, to dictate vision? So our vision must depend on how much money we've got. Mm. Or are we saying is it there as a spiritual ministry to enable vision? Yes. Um, so a lot of this is attitudinal. You know, I'm actually mm. asking for questions about what, what's our thinking on this area. Yes. Um, and and administrators need to to have that mm. slant on everything. Yeah. Um, we're not just. I mean, we may be gut, but we can we can do some thinking as a gut. Yes, absolutely. Um, and have an attitude that says, you know, I'm handling money as, as an administrator. Mm. I'm handling financial resources mm. um, in some way. Yes. Um, how can we use those? How do we view them? Yeah. Interestingly enough, back in worship, 
I've got stewardship as one of the areas. Okay. So the handling of finance comes in the support quest in the function. Yeah, yeah. But the thinking about stewardship itself comes in the worship section, because yeah. to me, it's all linked up with our relationship with God as disciples. Yes. Yeah. No, that's clever, isn't it, John? Yeah. Yeah, that's useful. Yeah. But don't get me on to finance too much because I get so excited about it that I I go on at length. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all these all these different things, and and yeah, I I think the support one is is great, and I, I think it, it's worth if you're administrator having a look through that, having a think through those questions, um, interacting with other staff um, about you know how how you're doing within your role and, and how that fits all this together. Um, I think there's there's some useful. The the one that really struck me, John was the outward section. I, I I was really challenged by that. It was it was for me it's so healthy to think, you know, we're in a season where there's a lot of need outside in communities. Um, you know, we may have projects, we may, may not have things that we're doing that reach into our community. But our Sunday morning services should be an outward, you know, expression. Oh, exactly, exactly. Um at my church last Sunday we had somebody who'd come back to church for the first time, I think, for many years. Okay. Um, so there's an immediately, there's an outreach aspect to yeah. how we deal with people like that coming to our normal Sunday service. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think just to talk about worship yeah. is the wrong approach. Yeah. yeah. Because a Sunday morning service, just to take that little element of activity, should have a Godward dimension an usward dimension yeah. and an outward dimension. Yeah. The, the, it, it doesn't worship doesn't equal Godward. Yeah. Yeah. Worship is, is everything. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, these three dimensions come. So to me, uh, the the outward theme has four questions on what I call openness. Yes. Um, four questions on outreach as such. So first of all, have we got an attitude of being open to the world? Yeah. In everything we do. Yeah. Before we then think about our outreach, which involves both direct proclamation, but also service, compassionate ministries, mm. and, and how we serve our communities. And then again, how are we developing in that? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And and there were some there were some points that really stuck out to me is you know, how are we helping our our members to be outward, not just in an outward project that we're doing as a church, but actually, yeah, I think you you write in there one of the sample things and things to chew over is you know are we supporting people in, in governors' roles, in in PTA roles, in in ways that they can play a part in their community, and how are we supporting them, and how does that how do we give time for people to do some of those things? Um, Gavin, it, it pains me that sometimes people like me as a Christ, a quote unquote a Christian worker. Yeah, I do Christian stuff as my job. Yeah, are seen as somewhat, you know, we're missionary and and holy and yeah. worthy of prayer. And I used to tell the story of a friend of mine who's retired now, who was headmaster of a, of a big, comprehensive in a sink on a sink estate in a, in a nearby town, mm. and no one thought of supporting him. Yeah, he wasn't a Christian worker. He was just a headmaster, head teacher, in a tough comprehensive school in a rough area mm. uh, we got our thinking completely warped if, if, if that's what we're thinking yeah um because everybody has an outreach aspect to their daily work to their where they live mm -hmm. um and we're my wife and i are moving house we hope um in the next two or three months and we're already praying for the road we're moving into yeah um, that we can be a presence for God there in some way. We don't know how, but yeah. um, we've got to have this attitude of being, that's why I call this the four, first four questions, openness. Yeah. There's yeah. got to be an attitude of openness before we start thinking about words like evangelism, which scares most people silly. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's, it's almost, yeah, living and breathing Christ and what Christ has done for us in, in the areas that, that we, you know, function and live in every day isn't it and I, I think and just doing a good job of work I mean yeah um just the way we carry out our normal uh, work or our relationships in our community um matters just so much yeah 
I, I love the scripture that Paul talks about this need the good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. And you should walk in, yes. Yeah, and and there's just something lovely about that kind of that, you know, your daily interactions. You know, I can think of good works as over and a big the big charitable things or the, the things that I do over and above my normal week. But actually these good works are every day conversations or kindness or stopping or praying or serving someone all, all of these things are god you know ordained moments and times for us to be outward and i i love that um and being challenged by that through through you know thinking and going through your review well organizations like the london institute of contemporary christianity and things like that lick have done so much in this respect of of of, of, of demonstrating that our daily life is our outreach, our witness. Yeah. Um, and everybody, every Christian can do that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. And and so, you know, we're going back to Sunday mornings. And uh, I, I love your your thinking on that. Is that you you probably should encounter all of five of those, shouldn't you? You should encounter leadership on a yep. Sunday. You should encounter a, a well organized Sunday morning, you know, with support and signposts and you know all the things that we need to run smoothly you know that god word the the us word community family getting together and the outward as you, you know we're talking about that somebody who walks in off the street who's never been in a church we, we get that occasionally um yeah we should encounter all of it shouldn't we john and that's the whole point they're f- they're five dimensions of church life which impact everything we do mm. um there isn't very much that we do that isn't in some way got a link with one of those, with, with all of those five. Yeah. yeah. And that's again where I just think it's more healthy to think about relationships with God, with each other, with the world yeah. than it is to think about activity. Yeah. Uh, worship so supposedly equals Sunday morning. Yeah. When I just don't think it does. Yeah. If we understood the word worship properly. Yeah. Um, outreach just being when we're talking to somebody about jesus well of course it includes that but being his witness in the job we do being the best teacher that we can be being the best cleaner that we can be yeah um it's it's just so important that we get this a more holistic yes view of things and for administrators i I just want to say you know i've I've worked for, for for many many years with church administrators operations people and things like that people like that um again for many people i think we've i think we've changed the culture now quite a bit but in, earlier on this was regarded as a separate category from mm-hmm. christian stuff yeah so the treasurer um wasn't in ministry they they were handling filthy lucre <laughs> um uh, there was a real attitude that there was there was spiritual work and there was practical work and it was put nicely you know, like that. But actually, what it meant was there's proper stuff. Yeah. Um, if you know the book about the trellis and the vine, um, uh, that, that's giving a more balanced view. We need to separate out and see which is which. But to me, they're both spiritual ministries, ministries to glorify God in ministries in which we serve Jesus, ministries in which we need the Holy Spirit to in flu- in 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 fusing us infusing us yeah and enabling us yeah and one of the things that's kept coming back to me time and time over that you know just the the break christmas break is this kind of you know we're involved in a very practical work we talk about the gut work but but there's a there's a spiritual effect to the work that we do in the church you know and, and i'd want to encourage administrators listening to this is that 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 you know we may see our ourselves as task driven or or task orientated but actually the practical work that we do that might be unseen has a huge spiritual effect on on the health of the church on the unity of the church on enabling the mission and the gospel to go out more effectively enabling our leaders to be more effective you know with their time and and their resources and their gifting um there's there's so much spiritual work that we we have to recognize don't we because i think if you don't if you don't make that connection you're going to lose motivation and drive. But if you can link that, that, and if you can see what you do makes a difference with a spiritual effect for this church, I think it brings fresh joy. I think it brings fresh motivation um, and enthusiasm. And um, it is a spiritual gift and it has a spiritual effect. 
Uh, that's that's put marvelously. I had a lovely email just before Christmas from somebody. I I, I lead the tutor team for okay. UK UK Church Administrator Network on the distance learning course that we have for yeah. church administrators, and somebody's just completing the course, and wrote a beautiful email to me to to, to say thank you for the course. It's helped her in her relationship with Jesus. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, it's helped her to see how her work impacts the work of the church. Yeah. So there's both a personal aspect there and, yeah. and, and, and thing in a way she hadn't seen before. Yes. She'd just been doing an administrative job, I think before. Yeah. Now she had a much broader view of the, of the spiritual nature of it. And it was just, just lovely to get something like that. Oh, I, I love that. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Cause on, on that journey of training to be better, you, you do, you realize, don't you, why you're there and the purpose why you're there and what God has called you to do and the difference it's going to make. And yeah, I love that, John. I, I think that's great. Um, any, any advice then? So, so you've given us some advice saying you could focus on one section, one year, one theme, another, um, you know, broaden this out. I've, I've shared this amongst our team and saying, Hey, have a look at this model, have a look at, uh, at um, some of these questions because it, it is hard to think about all these things. So the fact that you've given us a structure to work through, you've given us the questions, the support is there with the samples. Um, I, I think this is a, an excellent tool to be used, John. Any other bits of advice on this? As, as someone goes to the website, downloads it and starts working through it. Okay. Um, don't be put off by its seeming complexity because mm -hmm. it's trying to do a big job of, of cover everything. Yeah. I said, you know, you can take one of the five themes or you can take a section within one of those themes. Mm -hmm. um, if you're particularly interested in a particular a project for this year that you're, shall we say, an outreach project of some kind, mm -hmm. go and have a look at which bits of, of that might link in with that. And it may not just be the outreach area, the, the outward yeah. dimension. It may be something to do about the Godward dimension. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would say you can use it individually if you're an administrator mm -hmm. to sit down with a support theme and work it out yourself, see how it applies. Mm -hmm. You can do it as a church leadership. Yeah. You can you can do it as a home group in many ways. Yeah. Bits of it. Um, because then you've got people who aren't in leadership necessarily getting interested in what the church is all about. Yeah. I think the danger with a top-down approach, just leadership doing something like this, is that it, it's seen as as a leadership tool. When yes. it's, it's a Christian a Christian people's tool. The actual church health review is in the resources section of my website. Yeah. In the health checks uh, index. Yeah. You go to, first of all, resources, then health checks index, and you'll find it uh, as HC4 and HC5. But if you want a very simple version of it, just with the headings, go to the articles index and go to article A35 called Mapping Your Church, yeah. which looks at ways in which you can map all sorts of things in your church. But it also includes what I call there uh, the five themes map, yeah. which are these the yeah. same five themes, the same questions, the same basic headings, Just, but it's a very, very simple form of it. Fab. And great. So and might, be a, might be a simpler way in for some people. Yeah. And I, 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 I know you, you're worried about it being too complicated, but you know I think the five the five themes are really clear. I think the questions are, are broad and helpful. So you know I, I I certainly wasn't put off by it, John. But um, yeah, the mapping one I think is a simpler version. And 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 you've said that we can put these on our on the church office website for people to download. Yeah, yeah very very happy. We'll make the links available to John's site. I mean, John. Let, to, while we're talking about your site, I mean, you've got something like over 205 resources, training notes, articles for people um, in a very organized index and uh, everything's labeled and numbered. Let me encourage you, if you're a listener and you haven't checked out John's site, then please go and um, put in John Truscott into Google. He's going to come up straight away. He is the the top performing top man on church administration. Uh, careful. Um, um, I'm an enthusiast for church administration. John, you've got a wonderful gift and, and you've served um, the church hugely. Um, and uh, so thanks thanks for all you're doing. It, it, you know, 
check it out. And I know this podcast is listened to not just in the UK, but wider across the states and various other countries. And um, the resources are there. And John, you make them free and available for people to use. Yep. Everything on the site is free. You can print 30 copies, I say. It, all I say is put a, a limit on that because I, just to stop anybody doing a mass mailing of anything. Yeah. If you're in another country, bear in mind that I'm writing from a UK cultural perspective. Yeah. I, I would just make that point. And I don't, I can't claim to be able to relate it to an African culture, an American culture. Yeah. In fact, part of my worry in, in doing all of this over my lifetime has been that much of the church thinking in the 1970s and 80s came from the States because mm -hmm. yeah. they were far ahead of us. Yeah. But it did mean it was coming from a culture that was foreign for many British churches. Yeah. What I've always tried to do is to take the ideas from that and to see what applies in an English culture, or sorry, a British culture. Yeah. I mustn't forget the Welsh. Um, <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. Um, and to, to work from that, but that means I'm not necessarily saying this applies directly, yeah. although the work it, it, it's being applied and used by other people in Africa, in in in, in the Far East, and, and in all sorts of ways. Yeah, so true. And 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 John, you know, if as people go through the church review and they they have a look at this uh, this tool again on on the church office website and on john's website there are um you know if you want to focus on on budgeting or you think there's an area of outreach that you want to look at there are specific things that are targeted you know if you were thinking about running a, a church cafe or opening up a, a warm space for people um you know who might be in debt crisis or food crisis to come on in for an hour or so you know there, there's advice and, and information on on how you might do that um, training on how you might do that across lots of different sites and um, and do that. Before we go, John, let me just, let's do a little promo for, for you, Can. You were the founder of it um, back many years ago and supporting church administrators to link into it. Um, tell us a little bit more about your passion for that because, you know, I want to I want to sell that as well, that, you know, administrators shouldn't be on their own and that is one of the yeah. big highlights, isn't it, for me? Well, I'd also want to, to, to push your church office site, Gavin, because I just think that's that's doing some really brilliant practical stuff and you're doing pro formers of things that people need and stuff like that, which I'm not. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd like to think the work you're doing complements the work that I'm doing. Absolutely. In, in writing on websites. But you can, um, yeah, you, you can... Um, UK Church Administrator Network. Um, I handed that over, would you believe, I think it's five years now. Uh, it's flown um, by. And I ran it, I, I started it, ran it. Um, it. It was based on something similar that we'd had in the administry organisation in the 1980s and 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and handed it over five years to a team of directors. Uh, Gavin, you're on the board now, I, I believe. Right, yeah. Um, and they have developed it in a wonderful way, in a way I could never have done. Mm. So they've expanded the way it operates. It's grown quite a bit since my day. Yeah. Um, it, they're doing training events for administrators. Uh, they're doing a, a management um, course for, for senior, for operational staff, uh, to complement the distance learning course for church administrators that I still run. Yeah. Um, uh, they're, they're giving... Uh, consultancy advice um and it's really expanding I, i'm just thrilled at the way it's been taken over and, and developed and i'd like to think that if you're an administrator if you're interested in church administration or operations in any way at all and uh, that you're in touch with my website i hope yeah. with you can and with the church office i think those three there's three areas of of christians working to develop a a thinking about administration that is biblical, yeah. um, that is enthusiastic, that is that is wholesome, um, and we're all doing slightly different things, the three of us, yeah. the three areas, but put together, uh, it's just exciting to see how things have come on since the 1980s yeah. when I was first in this work. Yeah, it's it's Thank a God. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's it's lovely, and, and you know, you alluded in the in this podcast, John, about just how the culture's changed, where there are lots more church administrators around now. There are people in, in roles that this gift, this, um, this role and gifting is recognised in, in local churches far, far more. And, and so there are more people in posts, whether it be a part time, a few hours a week, whether it be in a full time role, in a more management play uh, role. 
Um, and the world has got more complex in the meantime. Yeah, and governance gets harder and all these things yeah, constantly changing. And um, yeah, it, it's it's good not to do it on your own. And I, I think, you know, there are, like as John said, three places that you can go and get some support. And um, we'd love to do that. So so thank you, thank John. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for yeah, Gavin, and, and I look forward to how your work is going to develop. I look forward to how you can is going to develop. I'm going to be moving into retirement over the next year or two. Uh, um, but I'd like to keep the website going. I'd like to continue writing because there's lots of things I've done in my life that I'd like to get into print. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 youngsters like you. <laughs> You're very young to both me <laughs> and the you can board um, that I'm just so excited about. Uh, that there's a vision for this. Yeah. That I can retire uh, with confidence, yeah. knowing that the work is going on in better and bigger and greater ways than ever I was able to do it. Oh, that's encouraging, John. Well, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you for your time today, listeners. Thank you for uh, listening into this. Uh, please check out this tool. Please give it a go. Um, and there are resources and help available. And um, if there's anything you would like us, any topics that you'd like us to cover, or any questions or or forms that you need, things that you think, oh, this would be useful, could be a time saver, just give you maybe a little bit more confidence to go, yeah, I'm doing the right thing here. Then please get in contact with us. Um, We'd love to be able to serve you. And uh, yeah, please check out the, re- the website for new resources. And uh, we'll see you on the uh, podcast again this year. Thank you, John. Okay, thank you, Gavin. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. everyone. Bye-bye.